Hello everyone, I'm Kaven, and I'm back today with another one of my little haunted house tunnel cards. So this one's really cute. We have pumpkins once again and bats. A little haunted house and some spider webs and things happening around here. I'm just going to make it smaller and show you the different layers. This is a slightly different design that I've been trying, which doesn't involve having tabs on the sides. What I've done is I've kind of extended the tabs and they're going to become fold over tabs for gluing. So you can see that I've got one, two, three, I've got four layers. They're the wider ones. This one is the front and this one here is the back. Now up here, I have the two side pieces, which I've expanded so that they will be able to be glued onto the edges of these tabs here. So what's actually going to happen is that these tabs will fold over and then I will glue them into the card and I'll show you how to do that when I go to my table and show you how to assemble it. Now most of these are fairly straightforward cuts. This one here I'm going to do on the intricate cuts setting simply because it's got lots of tiny little pieces. Let's have a closer look. So you can see in order to cut around the tree branches and the spider web, I'm going to use the intricate cuts selection there. Pumpkins one should cut reasonably well just on the medium cardstock setting. This one I'm also going to use the intricate cuts setting simply because of the little spaces in the fence. And this one also intricate cuts setting. Um, once again, simply because of these tiny little window panes and things that it needs to cut out. This one here, just on the normal medium cardstock setting should be fine. I like to do them all with a little bit of extra pressure. And sometimes on these very delicate little ones, I put them through twice, which means that they're actually cut four times because when you cut them on the intricate cuts setting, it automatically cuts it through twice. And then if you run it through again, that makes it four times it's been cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out all of these little pieces and then I'm going to go to my table and show you how to assemble this kind of new shape that I've designed here. So don't go away and I will see you at my table. Okay, so I've cut all my files out and this is how it's going to look. It looks a little bit dull at the moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to back the pumpkins with a bright colour to shine through the eyes, the nose and the mouth. I'm also going to back the little house with something really bright. So it looks like there's lights shining through the windows and the doorways and the pathway here. So let me show you the files. This is the front. Now I did cut it on the intricate cuts setting just so that it could get all these little delicate branches and in and around the spider web. the crazy pumpkins layer it cut out beautifully just on the normal medium cardstock setting here's the layer with the little fence i cut this on the intricate cuts setting and it cut out really nicely i think i might have put this one through twice so it's had four cuts to get through it this is the haunted house layer and I did this on the glitter cardstock setting because I did use a glitter cardstock just to add a little bit of bling to it. This one was a very simple cut just on the medium cardstock setting. Cut out lovely. And of course this one is just the back piece and it's in a nice bright yellow so it's going to show through the moon 
and the gaps in the clouds coming through. So that's all of my layers. Now for the time being I'm going to put to one side the front and the back. And I'm only going to be focusing on the wider ones that have got the built-in glue tabs. So we've got four of those. But before I do anything else, I'm going to put these two to one side and I'm going to do the backing colours for the little house and the crazy pumpkins. We have these little origami brightly coloured squares that I like to use, all in different kind of pearly colours. Now all I'm going to do is cut out little coloured pieces and glue them in behind the pumpkins just so that you can see pretty colours coming through on their faces. And of course when you turn it around to the right side now you can see that he's got a gleaming evil little grin and eyes. So I'll do the other two now. And there we go. That's got them backed and looking very cute. Now I'm going to do the house one. There we go. It makes such a difference. It really brightens it up. See how it changes colours? It's red one way, gold the other. Very sweet. Oh, so now that I've done that, it's time to do the tabs on the side for gluing. Now the gluing tabs are the side bits here. So where you see the angles, that's the tab. So I have to score a line from here all the way down to here and from here all the way down to here. Now, I prefer to use my scoring tool rather than do it on Cricut because I can put a little bit of extra pressure on it this way. Once they've been scored I'm going to fold them to the back. So that's how each tab is going to be made for gluing. They're all scored and folded now and ready for gluing onto the side pieces. I like to put them in order so that I know exactly where they're going. which can be challenging. Like this, like this, and like this. Now, these are my side pieces. What I'm going to do is, just going to turn them over. You may not be able to see, but I've already put little pencil marks at one centimetre apart. So, so these are already pre-marked, but I am going to draw a line just to guide me when I start to glue them on. You're not going to see this, it will be on the inside. Now I also have to score the gluing tabs. So I'm going to score from here, the point, to here, this point here, down to here, and here to here, and here to here. Now these tabs I'm going to fold upwards in towards my pencil mark. So these are just like the sides on my other little boxes with the tabs, 
my other little tunnel cards and they're going to go onto the sides in exactly the same way um, except they're going to be glued to the layers on the inside rather than having the tabs poking through. Some people don't seem to like the tabs poking through. Personally, I think they look really quite cute. And then the front and the back pieces will be glued onto these just like we did with the other tunnel cards. So the front will go onto there and this side and the back will go onto the back, of course. Now, it doesn't matter which way up these ones go. So this is the top layer. We've got the front in front of it and then this is the first layer. So it is going to be glued to this line here. The fold is going to be glued along that line just like that. So you may be able to see we've got the score line going along here for the glue tab and then we've got the first pencil line coming along here showing us where to glue the first piece. Need a little bit of glue on the tab. Not too much. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to align that fold with my first pencil line and also with the bottom of the card. I need to let that dry fairly thoroughly before I try to do the next piece so that it doesn't move. I'm going to very, very carefully fold it this way and you can see here now how the tab has been glued. Now the next piece, which is this piece here with the fence, it's going to be glued in exactly the same way but this time it's going to be glued up to the second line. So the fold of the tab will go to the second line. Just like that. And it will be glued on in place like that. This is the process until you get all of the layers glued on. Use too much glue and fold lines up with the pencil line and also with the bottom. When you're sure it's nice and dry, you can flip that one over as well. Next is the house layer and it's going to be glued up against the next pencil line. Line it up along the bottom, line it up along the pencil line. Now we have one line left and that is of course for this layer here going to line it up with the pencil line and glue it there. And that's the first side piece all glued down. Second side is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to start with the front piece, the orange piece. A little bit of glue on the tab. And the second side piece. Now we want it to match this side piece here so we know it's going to go to the first line. So let's line it up to the first line just like that. Make sure it's aligned with the bottom.
and you'll need to hold it until it's sufficiently dry. Now, the second one is going to be glued to the second line, of course. So here's our second line along here. And this one here will be glued up to the second line. So what we can do is we can put some glue on the tab it up with the second line. This next piece, the glittery piece, is going to be attached to this line here. This line here. Oops, come out of there. This line here. So we need some glue on the tab. see until it matches up with that line Hold. and now it's time for the last one so we want some glue on this tab And it is going to match up to the last line. Now that's the second side all glued now. So that's how it all goes together. You can see the different layers. You can see how the depth is going to work. No tabs sticking out through the sides all very nice and neat. So now we're going to put the back and the front on in exactly the same way. I'm going to do the back first. It's going to be glued to this tab here and then of course to this tab over here, just like the tunnel cards. When it's dry enough, very, very carefully, fold it the other way, and now we're going to glue it to the other tab. And that's the back on. So now we're going to turn it around and do exactly the same thing to the front. And that is the little tunnel card finished. Folds flat both ways for postage and when it's open you can see that it's got great depth in it. The colours are actually a little bit brighter than the camera shows. For example, these pumpkins are really orange. That's how it looks from the top. This is what it looks like from the back. 
Now I'll probably make a little sign here that says Happy Halloween or just leave it blank or even if there's nothing there you can write your sentiments on the back. The sides are very neat and tidy. No tabs coming through. So for those of you who don't really like the look of the tabs, then I guess this is a great option. I don't mind the tabs, I think they're quite cute. But this also works quite well too. So I hope you like it. I love these little cards, they're so cute. And they're reasonably easy to make too. You'll find the cut files for this little tunnel card at my Etsy shop, papercutpanache.etsy.com. Both SVG and PNG files are available. You'll also find this physical product that I've made here today listed for sale elsewhere in my Etsy shop. So if you'd like to have a go at making it yourself, grab the cut files and if you don't have a cutting machine or you would just like to buy it ready made, then it's available already made for you. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you love the result as much as I do. And that's all for today and another tutorial. So I'll be back again fairly soon with another one. Bye for now.